This is a short video that shows you how to track product serial numbers on sales and purchase orders. So we're going to focus on the workflow that's primarily based around warranties. We're going to confirm that a customer did indeed buy a certain item from you. We're going to see which purchase order the item was originally received from. And then we're going to look at the limitations of serial number tracking in BrightPearl. So let's take the scenario where a customer wants to return an item to you. You want to make sure that the item they're returning is in fact the same item that you sent them, and this particular item has a serial number on it. So you either take the serial number over the phone, or they send it to you by email, or you take it off the product when the product arrives. So the way to find the sale that contains that item is to do a sales search. And we need to do this from the sales list. So let's go sales, recent sales. Show the filter, put the serial number in the search box, and tick the little checkbox just to the right of search. What this does is it changes the search into a line item search rather than a header level search. Clicking filter report shows me the sales order that contains that serial number. If I drop into the order, you can see that this customer did in fact buy this particular printer, and there's the serial number. If we wanted to find out the supplier we got it from, and when we purchased it, we could do a similar search on the purchase orders list. Just show the filter, enter the serial number in the search box, and tick the checkbox. And that search is all text in the SKU or the product line description. And there's the purchase order for Kanoki Industries. If I go into that purchase order, we can see that it was invoiced earlier this year, and there were three that were purchased, one of which matches the serial number we've just searched for. So let's see how we get this data into the system. We've got an empty purchase order here for the same company, and what I'm going to do is add one of their printers. We're going to buy two of these, so update the quantity to two, and save changes. You then email this purchase order off, and later you'd receive the goods. Just before you receive the inventory, just put the cursor into the description tab, hit enter, which then lets you scan the barcodes into the product description box. This serial number information only stays on the purchase order line. It doesn't go down to the inventory level. So this process does not let you see which items you currently have in stock and their serial numbers. It's only for tracking sales and purchase orders. In a very similar way, when you sell the product to a customer, you take the order for them, and then when you actually know the serial number you're going to ship, hit enter and scan the serial number in. Now you can only edit the line item if the sale is not yet invoiced. If the sale has been invoiced, then this approach isn't going to work. What you could do is you could add a custom field, and in that custom field, you can put the serial numbers. So what I've done here is I've created a custom field tab called Warranty, within which is a field for serial number. I could add one serial number, or perhaps add more separated by commas. Let's copy this first serial number so that I can show you how to search for sales that contain that particular serial number. So we've now saved the sale with that custom field information. Go to your recent sales list, show the filter, and this time instead of using the search box, click add a filter, and then choose your serial number custom field, contains, enter your serial number. Now it's important to make sure that the date filter is broad enough to include sales from a long time ago, just in case you sold this item to them quite a while back. And let's filter the report, which brings up the sale that contains that particular serial number. So to move on to the limitations of this approach, it does not let you see which serial numbers you currently have in stock. It does not provide any check of serial number validity or whether you're reusing existing serial numbers. It doesn't handle batch or lot numbers, or inventory expiration dates. So if your serial number management is complex or doesn't fit into this workflow, you might well need to manage it externally, perhaps in Excel, or integrated with a separate system. And that takes us to the end of the video, where we see how to track serial numbers on sales and on purchase orders.